Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Q&A video. This is going to be a video where I basically answer your questions that you had from the last Project Go uncut video. The first question comes from Andy who asks, how would you handle the same situation if you were by yourself? So basically he's asking, how do I handle big groups by myself without Jason there distracting the group? Now, if I were in this situation, I would address the group directly and ask them if I can borrow the girl and take her aside for a few seconds. In the video, I did it a little bit indirectly because everybody was having fun. It was a very um, uh, uh, upbeat environment and I felt like I could do it indirectly without bringing too much attention to the issue. So let's say the family allows me to take the girl aside for a few seconds and talk to her. Most likely what's gonna happen is they're going to be standing there and they might talk amongst themselves, but generally speaking, they're gonna be bored and they're gonna be waiting for me to finish talking to this girl. So in that case, I would probably move a lot faster in terms of getting her number and maybe even getting a kiss. Soundwave Inc. 777 asks, is there such thing as being too straightforward and going too hard and what can counterbalance the act of leading too much? And someone by the name of Guest responded, the only way to learn that fine line is by crossing that line over and over and over and over again until you learn how to calibrate girls. Now that answer is 100% perfect, so I will just leave it at that. Frank asks, what do you mean by putting your ego aside? Can you go more in depth on this topic? After having an amazing interaction with a girl, a lot of guys feel good about themselves, and that's a good thing. You're supposed to feel good after a good interaction. But unfortunately, that feeling feeds our ego, and it's hard for us to let that feeling go. All see guys in God mode right, going girl after girl after girl and just having the time of their lives talking to new people. Then they meet a girl that's really cool, um, they'll exchange numbers, maybe they'll even make out, uh, they'll hang out for a little bit, and then she leaves to go to another bar with her friends. After that happens, guys just feel really, really comfortable. They feel like, okay, I got my ego boost for the night, I'm done, and they just sit back and relax, and even if they do approach, they generally tend to take a very safe approach, and as we know, Safe approaches generally don't work, especially at night. Now, why does this happen? Because the guy's ego is telling him to hold on to that good feeling that he got from talking to that girl. Your, your mind just doesn't want to let it go. That's your ego saying, let's not do any more because we might feel bad about ourselves. Obviously, that is the wrong mindset to have because you're missing out on a bunch of opportunities. This goes for rejection too. When guys get rejected, their ego is telling them, shit, that was harsh, I feel worse now, so let's not approach girls anymore and avoid this negative feeling. And then they start spiraling into a negative pit of doom. Realistically, when you get rejected, you should be saying, it's just a girl. There are billions more out there. Fuck my ego, let's move on to the next one. All Walls question is, you guys should have mic'd up Jason and had another video of his audio playing wingman. So a lot of people have been asking for this and this is something we're going to do very, very soon. Isas Fu asks, question, is it also effective to call girls out on negative and positive behaviors during day game? Um, yes, you can call girls out whenever you want. Obviously, you don't want to go overboard and do it every single minute of the interaction, but Pointing things about her body language and eye contact and that kind of stuff is generally good for a, a stimulating conversation. But as with everything in day game, tone it down just a little bit. It's rare that a girl will be willing to move as fast in the daytime as they would at night. The next question is from Adam. I really have to know, did this go anywhere? Meaning, did she reply to your text? I'm not sure how many viewers actually approach as much as I do and I get, and the vibe I got from her is that she wasn't into you, no offense. You did a fantastic job, but this girl simply wasn't attracted. So yeah, if she responded, I would be very surprised. This is a general misconception. A lot of guys come up to girls and when they find out that this girl's a little bit shy, they automatically think, this girl's not into me, therefore I should move on to the next one. But the reality is, shy girls just don't know how to handle many social situations because they're shy. So when a random guy comes up and starts hitting on them, they're not gonna know how to handle that either. And that, to a lot of guys, comes off as they're not interested. But to give you a follow up, we are texting back and forth and unfortunately, we have not met up yet. It usually takes a little bit longer with the shy girls. Super Glider asks, 
Um, when you're actually in the situation, are you guys able to analyze what's happening like in the breakdown? I can't imagine being able to register every moment and know what's going on like you guys are able to do or you guys are able to. Does it just come with experience? This is a really, really good question. We go into a very, very in-depth analysis in these videos and the fact of the matter is we actually do think like that while we're talking to girls. But that whole analysis happens within a fraction of a second. And yes, you are right, it comes from experience. Take Michael Jordan, for example. Arguably one of the best basketball players ever. When he has the ball, he can take a shot, he can go for a pass, he can wait for a screen, he can draw a foul, he can do a layup, he can shoot a three-pointer. There are an unlimited number of things that he can do. And he thinks about that for a fraction of a second. He thinks about what is the best decision to make at this moment and why is that the best decision. He thinks about that literally within a second. Now let me ask you this. Do you think he was born with that skill? Do you think he was able to do that at five years old? Of course not. He was actually cut from the basketball team in high school. So these cognitive skills that you learn come with practice and experience. Now with that said, did Michael Jordan, even in his prime, make some stupid, silly mistakes? Yes, of course he did. One thing you have to remember is that you can never be perfect. We still make really, really stupid mistakes when we talk to girls to this day. But the more you practice, the less mistakes you'll make, and the more often you'll be able to make the right decision and the right move. From Drake123, how do you deal with mixed groups boys and girls. Whether or not there were guys in this group, I would have done everything in the exact same way. The only time I would do something different is if one of the guys happened to be her girlfriend or maybe he wants to fight me or maybe even both. In that case, I would just apologize, let it go and move on to the next girl. There is no point of getting into a fight over a girl you just met. Flora's Simple Pickup asks, What's up? I believe you briefly addressed this in the shit test video, but just to clarify, what if the first girl in this video you got the number from was still within earshot of the second girl you approached at the very end? Would you still have done it anyway? Or would you have been more cautious and maybe waited until the first girl was gone before approaching anybody, anyone else? So if the first girl was still standing nearby, I would probably wait for her to get a little bit further before I talk to any other girls, just because it's kind of a turn off when she sees you flirting with another random girl the same exact way that you flirted with her. But that's not to say that I haven't done something like that before, um, just because I think it's hilarious. Now, let me flip the situation around when I get rejected. So when I get rejected, I actually like to talk to girls right next to the girl that just rejected me because one, it shows that I don't give a shit to both girls and two, it's fucking hilarious. Ryan asks, love this one, most inspirational so far. I don't normally comment, but I love the differences between all of your guys' games. I think that would make a great podcast topic. When did each of you realize what your preferred approach methods were? I noticed Jason tries to be as physical as possible, as quick as possible. Jesse connects humorously and emotionally to win over a girl. And Kong is just classy and smooth as fuck, like pure confidence. Is this based off of what you're trying to get out of the girls or does it just happen as you work on your approach and become more comfortable with yourself? First of all, you are 100% correct in your analysis of our styles of pickup. The differences in our styles come mainly from the differences in our personalities. It's similar to how comedians have different styles of stand-up comedy, um, like how basketball players have different styles of playing basketball, and like how filmmakers have different styles of making movies. Always remember that when you're learning pickup, you're not trying to become a completely different person you're learning the structures and the guidelines of how to talk to girls and you're putting your personality into that. And your second guess was the one that's correct. The more you work on your approach, the more comfortable you are with yourself and the more your true personality shines through when you're talking to people. One of the greatest perks of learning pickup is on top of getting more girls, you get to learn how to express yourself in a confident and fulfilling way that you've probably never been able to do before. All right guys, thanks again for sending in your questions. We will see you next week.